I'm in my living room and all of a sudden I'm sitting here and 179 people show up. What are you all here for today? Didn't you hear me? All right, so then what are you here for? <laughs> I don't see any messages. Learn and grow, yes. Thank you, Allie. To learn, to learn, to connect, support, great information, inspiration, community. Love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, so it is a final countdown, and you could take that in many ways. Uh, I remember March 13th was a final countdown for remote learning in my school, and then I went to remote learning with my kids, and then I've had a whole summer, and now it's a final countdown to start off a new school year, and the ultimate final countdown, the Digital Librarian Survival Toolkit. So we're going to show it off today. Um, you can see my screen, yes, just thumbs up or high fives or waves or whatever. Okay, so this link here, I don't know if you've ever used Book Creator, this link right here, please don't share that link out because um, I was consolidating my accounts and sometimes the link changes. So I have a static link that you will get today and also it's on my website. So you know, I'm a librarian, I'm into data. So on my website, you can also go and you can get the link. There'll be a little pop-up and then it asks people to say where they're from. So for the Epic eBook, we have people using the Epic eBook and it's only been about a week in Tunisia, India, Brazil, Belize, uh, Mexico, Spain, Ireland, the UK and Singapore among other places. So please, if you can direct people there, and if not, it's okay. I just want to capture as many places that we can to see how far the stretch is for the Digital Librarian Survival Toolkit. So has anyone here used Book Creator before? I'm very excited to use Book Creator because it is a really wonderful way to create a uh, digital ebook, but it still has that um, a flip book feel to it. So I really like it. So I'm going to show you the Digital Librarian Survival Toolkit. Let me put uh, this really small down here. And I have my conversation here. And here we go. So first of all, I want to thank uh, New Jersey Association for School Librarians for uh, sponsoring this event because of them and uh, because of Lisa Strongbang, I'm sorry, Strawbinger. I'm sorry if I'm, I'm butchering your name, um, but she reached out to me and she said, let's have a bigger party. Let's, let's not go for the 100, let's go for bigger. So thank you for New Jersey Association for School Librarians for sponsoring this event. I can't thank you enough. So I'm going to give you shout outs everywhere. Woohoo! So when you tweet and when you thank, please tag NJASL to thank them. We are all better together. I also thank, like to thank my sister-in-law, Jean Picorni, who's a graphic designer who designed this cover because I just couldn't do it justice. And I actually gave her a link to the book and she looked it over and I kind of told her what I wanted and she went with a very organic look. It's hand drawn, but it has some uh, digital font and um, it has all of those components that we need to be librarians. And she thought it was a very important at this time to leave that corkscrew there for that bottle of wine. So I appreciate that, but um, we put all those things in there. And at the last minute I looked at it and I said, this is really great, but where's the book? Where's the book? Because she saw Digital Library and I said, nope, we have to have the book. So the book is there because we are first and foremost promoters of reading and books. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for uh, NJSL and my sister-in-law. So let's dive in. Let's look into this toolkit. So when we turn the page, you can see, I'm gonna just going to make this chat real small, you will see a little forward to you, um, the readers and the actual link, the static link to the Digital Librarian Survival Toolkit. Okay, there is a little video from me, um, some links about me and email 
the book will always be updated. So if you see something that needs to be modified, if you need something, that, if you are an author, you need to add something, be my guest. And if you see that there's something missing you would like to write, please uh, send me an email. Um, or if you'd like to contribute to this book, just click this link or to other books because we're going to have other books coming out, curriculum based. Um, so I would like a library, librarian voices in those as well. We will have the videos of the recordings um, in the ebooks, and I guess that's it for the forward. So let's go ahead. So here is my sister-in-law. She lives in Midlothian, Virginia. So shout out. I've been to Chesterfield. I see there's someone from Chesterfield. I've been there. My in-laws live in Richmond. So I have been there. We haven't been since Christmas. Miss our family. But yes, I love Virginia. So this is my sister-in-law, Jean. And this is a link to her LinkedIn. If you love her work, um, just go right to her and she'll help you out. And these are bitmojis of all of our authors. And it will be great. Growing. We will go into Jean's side here if we need to and add those bitmojis. So there's always room for more. Okay, what I really love about this book it is it has a clickable index because uh, for me to put it everything in alphabetical order as we keep adding things is going to be a nightmare. So all we have to do is add things to the back and it is a clickable index wherever you want to go. This is an alphabetical order. This is how Book Creator works. You can link to other outside sources or you can link within the book. So you can link it, you can click anywhere you want and, and go immediately or you can just browse through the book. Deb, do, are, do we have any questions before I keep on going? Nope, just announce them where they were from and a lots of oh boys and wows. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Deb is my wingman. She is an awesome, awesome educator from uh, Texas. So we've met before and hugs to you, Deb, for Thank always you. helping me out. Hugs to you. <laughs> Because I can't do this alone. <laughs> I'll just, I'll stop you if anybody has a question. Awesome. Oh, she, somebody, Donna just asked, is there a preferred hashtag? Uh, we don't have a preferred hashtag. Um, I, I don't have one. If you want to create one, be my guest. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll support it. I'll go for it. But um, I've been a little busy lately, so I haven't thought of a hashtag. <laughs> my brain is a little bit of a mush. So, but I'll, I'll go for any hashtag you come up with. Okay, so um, th so that was one of the reasons I came up with this book. Um, and, and, you know, working with Deb and working with all librarians, I said, you know what, I can't do this alone. And I can't wait for a publisher. By the time I get this to publication, it's going to, I mean, we need it now. We need it now. I, you know, we started this in May and then I had to put it in the back burner because, hey, we all have a day job. Um, and then I said, okay, well, now I have to pick it up again because we need it for the fall. Um, I could not have done this alone. So time to get a publisher, time to get it printed, time to write. I have three kids. So, and I don't know everything. And librarians, we know where to get the information. And so I went to the source. You, you helped write this. So this is your book. So let's go look around. We have... Um, uh, first pages is about the author, so I'll go through here. These are all the authors of the book. Um, they have their website links, they have their Twitter handles. So if you want to reach out to them personally, tell them how awesome their pages are, that'd be great, make it public. This is advocacy at its best because you're going to give shout outs to your fellow librarians. These are all your friends now. They want to hear from you. So tag them. Um, when you see them at a conference, eventually give them a big hug. Um, so this, this, is, this is the place, these, this is the wall of fame here, and there's always room for more. So try to make things nice and easy. Every page has a click to return to index. So whatever page you are on, page one to page 200, hey Deb, there you are. <laughs> All you have to do is click back to index and you are back at the index. You don't have to flip through the pages. I love books. I love reading print books. I rather that than ebooks, but in this respect, we need an ebook because we need something that can uh, be dynamic, that has videos, that has text, and that we can search very, very easily. 
So you know what? I'm going to show you just a few more pages and then we're going to dive in. I'm going to go here. And this yeah. is a great, I saw someone on, on Twitter saying that they were going to use this uh, to collaborate with their teachers, which I think is awesome. And I think it's also really great to show to administrators because we need our own PD and we can create our own PD with for each other. So this is my section on QR codes for accessibility and engagement. You'll see some videos, you'll see a QR code, and you'll see some YouTube videos, some things I've done for, with Flipgrid um, with QR codes. So I love QR codes, have some fun with that. There's almost 25 to 30 ideas here. My little Ignite session at uh, Flipgrid when, when we had our uh, uh, the ISTE booth, and hopefully we'll get back to that again. Um, and then I just finished last night my section on WeVideo. This is all on screen recording. So you can record your screen with Flipgrid. So people who, um, who contributed to this book, they could use whatever video format they wanted. You could video right into Book Creator. You can add audio hot points, or you can put your own links to YouTube videos, or you can just upload your own videos. So you someone, can, someone just asked, where does the QR code on your apron go to? Oh, the QR code of my apron goes to a Flipgrid for book recommendations. So I love that for, um, I use that at a, as a, at a conference. And I also use that uh, at my Scholastic Book Fairs. I have the kids talk about the books that they're buying. And if they're not buying anything, just what books that they like and what books that they see that browsing. So that's a little QR code. So if you make that a little bigger, you might be able to access that Flipgrid. Uh, so there, so this is all screen recording. So we've got Flipgrid, we've got WeVideo, and we've got Screencast-O-Matic, which I use a lot. Screencastify, Google Meet, and Zoom are all places that you can use for uh, screen recording. So now I'm going to go back to the index, and we are going to go to Debs. So Deb has one on digital breakouts with Wakelet. So I'm just going to go click that. And it's going to take me to Deb section. It's a little slow. There we go. And this is Deb <laughs> section. So Deb, you want to tell us about your digital breakouts? Sure. Um, really what I did was I kept it, the directions to any format. I have linked somewhere in here for uh, building the wakeouts in a breakout. But for now, this is just the basic background, how to get started, how to build it. Um, I have found that if the kids are pretty tech savvy nowadays, you have to be careful when you create it on a Google site because somehow they can go and figure out the code and then they just type in the answers and hi, I'm done in two minutes. You don't want to do that. So I just did it step by step, get organized, get everything you want, have an idea. What is it that you want them to learn and how are you going to use it? Get all that stuff first. Don't jump into, I'm going to build a site and go doesn't work that way okay um just build it and they will come the kids will come they will ask over and over to do breakouts um build the google form which is the greatest thing in the world because you can do all kinds of sections and if they get it right it'll go on um my one suggestion when building a breakout for clues don't overwhelm them especially on a google site four clues and you're good. And then again, let them play. But of course, jumping back to step four, proofread, make sure you do it. Make sure you have your fellow teachers or librarians do it and then hand it off to the kids. And then on that far right panel is my link to how you can actually do it in Wakelet. And I've included a template and a couple of examples on how to do it. And that was it. I think that's the only pages, right? Yeah, I, and I love the fact you, you got so much information in just two pages. Think of this as your cheat sheet, your little reference mm -hmm. that you can use. I love uh, this book creator because I could just take the link and I can just open it up on my phone. I could open it on a tablet. I could, get, I could hand it out. And with me, I have videos. I have links. I have 35 friends who can help me out. And again, I can reach out. Again, you see Deb has her information right here. Whoops, right there. Ah! <laughs> and um, you, can, you can get in touch with her. So you have 35 friends immediately who will help you. Um, Deb, what do you think about the book creator experience, the book creator format? 
I had never used it before. I did the level one book creator, how to do it. And I guess it was like, what, hour? Yep. And then I just jumped in and you have to play and you learn all the little tips and tweaks and tricks that are in there. And it was, so when I was doing the first page, I originally had it in four squares. And I was like, no, I want to make it different. So I just went and changed it up. So it's three here, but then there's two vertical, uh, horizontal, one vertical. I got to play. And the thing that was great working with other librarians is we had the access to go and see what they were doing. And when I liked a font that someone was doing, all I had to do was click on it and I was able to see, oh, that's which one they used. And I was able to go back and fix mine. Wasn't that it the was coolest thing? You get to see other people's yeah. work? Mm -hmm. And uploading the Bitmojis was so easy. I basically did it on my phone and airdropped, or you can use the uh, Chrome extension and it goes right through. Love it, it love it. Fun. Being a part of both of these books was just, you know, it was great and meeting all these people that we never got a chance to meet before. That's the other thing. It brought everybody together, a nice community. Awesome. So just the, a, an update to Book Creator right now, they have columns now. So whatever text you put in, you can click and it'll automatically make columns for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about the column feature. Um, also, if you would like to write for this book, I, I, I do highly recommend that you take the Book Creator uh, first level certification. Right. It's only about an hour and it is wonderful. You can, make your, your, you can make your own free Book Creator account right now and make 40 books. Did you know that? 40 books. You can't and collaborate because that's a paid feature, but you can make 40 books. So could you imagine making books that you can use with your students remotely? Someone just asked, and I can't remember, I think so. Can we put gifts in here? Um, you can, uh, they said something about linking, uh, I, I did put ask it in the Are book we? creator Facebook group. Um, I, I wanted to create oh, my it. own, but I couldn't upload my own, but I could drag one from Giphy. I could put the link in there, oh, right. but, um, that is something I, cause I love making gifts. Um, so I, I that is something that I, I'm going to highly encourage them to do that. Cause I love that. All right, so if I want to go back, again, both pages, I can just click back to return to index. Look at that. <laughs> and Deb, can you see if we have another author in today's group and we oh, can click on their work? Somebody just type in that you're here and I'll shout you out. First come, first serve, though. <laughs> yes, yes, There's first so come, first serve. <laughs> uh, Courtney is here. Which one did you do, Courtney? And Amanda Jones is also here. Awesome. Courtney, which one did you do? She's almost typing. Okay. Uh, ebooks and audiobooks. Ebooks and audiobooks. There we go. Epic and Unite for Literacy. I click it here and it goes to ebooks and audiobooks. Awesome. Courtney, do you want to take it over? You want to talk? You can unmute yourself and go Hi. for it. Good morning. There she is. <laughs> Good to see you. This was really fun. I did not take the tutorial and I was still able to figure it out pretty easily. So, um, but mine are not nearly as fancy as Christina's are. <laughs> I have a lot of screenshots. And they text. are. Um, no, yours are great. Look at that. Look at that. Raise your hand if you really think Courtney's are great. They are, Courtney's are great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was really fun to be able to see all of the different ways that you could put things in here um, and add text and different features to it, but um, it really was quite simple to put together. So if you haven't used Book Creator before, don't be intimidated. It was pretty simple to figure okay. out. Yep. And mine was just on free ebook and audiobook platforms that you can use with your students um, that are easy to get to um, and access for um, um, is epic more appropriate for elementary or secondary or both it is marketed towards more elementary age to maybe middle school but i think that there's quite a few things in there that you could use with high school students um, a lot of my section focuses on how to use this for instruction instead of for 
um, reading enjoyment. Uh, it's great for ELL students. Yes, I 100% agree for our students who maybe are not reading at grade level, um, which is fabulous. You do have to make an account. You can put your students in there. Um, just make sure that your district approves the use of that tool. Um, you yes. can assign books to students. You can put collections together. So like if you have an inquiry project, you could put a whole collection of books on that topic together, which is really fun. Um, and then assign that to them. You can even make quizzes within the program. So if you want them to answer questions after they're done with the book, you can do that. And then someone said they hadn't heard of Unite for Literacy before. That is a free website. You do not need to make an account of any kind. You just go to that and it pops up. And what I love about Unite for Literacy is that the books are um, pretty basic in their structure. Um, the words that are used are um, more on the simple end fabulous for ELL students, fabulous for new readers. And the great thing about it is it's narrated in a really, really wide range of languages. And we actually had some of our district translators listen to the books and they said that they're pretty spot on. Like the translations are, are good translations of those books. Um, our native indigenous centered education director was so thrilled when he saw that there's quite a few native languages that are included in here too. So no account needed for that one. Text and audio, um, really fun. Thank you so much. This looks fabulous. Thank you so much for teaching me because I had not, I knew about Epic, but I did not know Unite for Literacy. So this is awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney. Thank you. So I'm going to return to the index again. I'm just going to click that. It's going to go through the pages and it's there. And now, Deb, you said we had Amanda with us. Yeah, hosting live virtual tours. I also have Karen is in here. I've got a few others I'm trying to keep track of, but Amanda did hosting live, live virtual tours. Good. I have live virtual uh, field trips or tours. That's her. That's her. Okay, good. All right, so we have Amanda. So I, I love your work. I've seen it on, on, on Facebook, but now we actually get it in the book. And what I really like about this book creator is we are connected uh, librarians right here, um, but there are people who are not on Twitter. There are people who are not on Facebook. There are people who are not on Instagram, but now with this link, they can see the awesome ideas that they're missing even without being on social media. So Amanda, let's see what you have to share. I uh, first I want to say thank you so much for letting me contribute uh, to this book because I, I started these virtual trips when we went uh, to distance learning in March and they've kind of become a big thing. So I really wanted to share about it. Um, but I do a series called Journey with Jones. And so basically what I've added in the book is um, kind of what my trips look like, how to promote your tours and trips, um, how I set it up, and then I go into some of the tools uh, that I'm that I've been using. Um, I use a variety of tools, and I, and I host my tool, I host my trips live, um, and we I, I use a slide deck. But I go through and I, I show Google Trek, Google Arts and Culture, and take the students on um, a combination of virtual reality, 360 degree panoramas, and I really wanted to share those tools with everybody because before March I didn't even know half of these existed. <laughs> It, really? And you did all this? You learned yeah. on the fly? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I learned all of it in March, how to use every single one of these, except for YouTube. I already know how to use YouTube. Oh, wow. Look, I mean, you have to look at Amanda's virtual field trips. They are awesome. And I love the fact that you are doing the field trips. It's you. It's not just we're looking at a webcam. You made these and you are doing them live, which is really, which really makes me nervous. <laughs> Anything live makes me nervous. But the <laughs> fact that you're out there doing it, that's amazing. And what's the feedback you've gotten? We, um, so we actually have the fam I did it mostly for fun back in the spring. And so families were watching them together. I did them at night. Um, around 5 p.m. And so uh, parents were sending me pictures of their families watching the trips together. And they they would ask questions and comments during the live trips. And then yesterday, we got to, I actually did one live with 300 students um, yesterday for the first time back at school. And half the kids were at school because we're on a hybrid schedule. And they were like, I, I got actual feedback from the kids in the hallways and they are loving it. 
Oh my gosh, that is so awesome that you're getting actual feedback. What's it like to see your kids again? Oh, amazing. I wish I could hug them. I can't, but uh, it's, it's pretty amazing to, to get to see them after all this time. Oh, this, this is just, I just love this. This is, and it's so clearly written. It's so easy to follow and you can understand how to do this. Um, Amanda, this is just awesome. I just love this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Deb, who else do we have in there? Uh, let's see. I'm scrolling backwards. I see that Rose Luna the, did the translation accessibility tools. Yep, I know, Rose. Rose, we have you right here, your translation and accessibility tools. Hi, Rose. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, great. You know, you always feel like the tech's not going to work when you want it to. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for uh, letting me participate in this. Um, I had, you know, I uh, work in a district where we have a large ELL population, and I know many districts do, and with the quick transition to online, try, you know, many of our teachers are struggling to to communicate with the families and show them how to use Google Me and you know um, just all sorts of problems and and we're all looking to communicate and include all our students and I began with um, a teacher you know asked how she could translate something and you know we assume that most people know Google Translate and Docs at least I did but I found that many of my teachers just didn't know that feature so I kind of started with that and then I realized that um, I had seen that with Google Meet you know, you can activate captions to help our students, but then um, some of our students can't understand those captions in English. And I realized you could translate it with Google Translate. So I made a screencast on that. And then I began to think of all the different ways we could uh, use translation tools in G Suite and uh, also PowerPoint. And so I began to put it all together so that it will be easy, easy for our librarians, easy for our teachers to find them all in one spot. And as I began to put this together, I kept finding other little tips that I put in the boxes that I hadn't realized uh, some of the things you could do, like translating Google Slides. You know, there's an add-on that you can use to translate your slides. Um, so um, this is the PowerPoint. You can, you know, if you are in a Google Meet uh -huh. and you want to use PowerPoint, you could also, or a Zoom, you could also use PowerPoint and have PowerPoint translate the captions so that your students and families can understand the lesson. And then of course you can always use YouTube too. If you upload your videos to YouTube, you can, um, uh, you can get captions and then you can translate it to any, the person viewing it can uh, translate the captions to any language. So there's just so many great tools to have together. And um, Christina had mentioned Immersive Reader to me and I had seen it at conferences, but I really hadn't gotten to study it and wow, is it an amazing tool to help not just our ELL students, but our special ed students, um, anybody that you know has a concussion. There's just so many features if you look at you know, how it can read aloud. I thought the picture dictionary was amazing. Um, the fact that when you click on a word, you can see a picture of it, and then you can also pick what language you want it read up, like to say the word in English and just have the word said in Spanish. Um, there's a, a thing to help uh, a line reader to help focus in on certain parts. And then there's all the tools that I didn't realize integrate. Like when I use Wakelet, I hadn't really noticed that there was an immersive reader button. So if you have uh, things you save there with text, it will read it out loud and the student can pick the language as well. So it's just some amazing tools that I think sometimes we've heard about, but we hadn't had a chance to look at. And I just wanted to pull them together for everyone to make it easier. I think this section is so powerful because it not only helps uh, the school librarians, it helps all the teachers. It could help uh, school counselors. It could even help our administrators. Yeah. And the fact you have it all on these simple pages is just so easy to learn about. It's a lot of work. I know you did a lot of work to yeah. make it look simple. And and then same as you were saying, you have three kids. I have a four-year-old and four-year-olds don't understand like, you know, when you're trying to record or you're busy. So it was tough, but I, I definitely thought it was a worthwhile project because there's tools that we all need access to. Well, Rose, thank you so much. You are the perfect person to do this section because you work in such a diverse uh, district. And I know you're such a leader that I'm glad that you <laughs> took my gentle um, encouragement. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, I don't know <laughs> how this is going to work. But, you know, when, when, when she asked, you know, I always, I love, you know, that's the thing about all of us doing these books and everybody who's online today over the summer. We love our jobs. We love it and we want to do as much as we can. And sometimes it's, it's hard to get everything done that we want to get done. 
But this is a, an amazing project to be a part of and that I feel will reach so many people once it's released today. So I'm very excited about it and to show my school district as well. Well, I'm so help, and ultimately to help our students and their families. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that you did all the heavy lifting to make our jobs easier on this. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Deb, who else do we have in there? Uh, we got Leah did virtual book clubs. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and I have virtual book clubs. <clears throat> Let's see what we have in virtual book clubs. Okay, Leah. Hi, Leah. Hello. Hi. I'm excited Hi. to be here. You're excited? I'm excited. So tell us all about your section. Okay, um, I have a book club at school and we have about 12 to 15 students usually who participate. And it broke my heart when we got out and we couldn't continue. And I just brainstormed and tried to find some tools that I could use where I could reach my students. And our system wouldn't allow us to use Zoom meetings or Google Meet. Oh, so what so did you use? I was, so I was limited. <laughs> so um, I tried Remind, but we couldn't really have a good conversation with that. So then we used GroupMe for our weekly conversation. And we used Google Classroom so that I could communicate with them. We used Padlet. I'm not sure if you've used Padlet. It's a digital bulletin board. Mm -hmm. Oops, I'm going to go back here. Yep, Padlet. So we yep. used Padlet and I would post three or four things each week for students. You know, they don't like to be overwhelmed with a lot of information or for lack of a better word, an assignment. And I try to keep the book club light. It's not like another English class for them. I want it to be fun. And so I always had a quiz, like a fun quiz, students like those, the high school students do. And something about the book. And if I could include a video link, I always tried to do that. And I like to get data from my book clubs. I guess you see that on this page. Mm -hmm. um, that helps me when I'm planning the next book club. And I use Google Forms usually for that. I like to get feedback from the students about how they like the book. Um, and kind of leads me in what to choose next for them. And I try to, we try to do about four books a year and different genres, you know, to meet all the population. Do the students choose the book or do you uh, choose the book? Sometimes they do. Yes, they do. I had a student, um, I'm not real into the zombie thing. I'd never even read a zombie book or watched the zombie <laughs> show on uh, TV. But one of our students <laughs> graduated this spring and she was all about zombies. So she chose our last book. She was a senior and I thought this is a great way for her to go out. She chose the book. And of course the students loved it. <laughs> It was, I enjoyed it too. It, this makes me grow w with the students. You know, I try to get things that they like to read. And so it may not be, a lot of times it's not something I would have chosen. So I grow a lot through the book club. Now, would you, were you, were you giving, um, were you circulating books? Did the kids have to get their own books or, I mean, especially now and, or, and did you, or did you have them as eBooks? I had the books already for a couple of books that we were going to do I already had copies for them. And so I mailed the copies to them. Uh, I just wow. I wanted them to have it in their hands. And I know everyone likes to get mail, not junk mail, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, we all like to get a book in the mail and the students love that. They love that personal attention and getting their own book in the mail. They were so excited when they got their books in the mail. And I always try to give author feedback too. Um, as you see, we had Alice by Heart was one of our last books that we read. And this author, I think it was his debut, debut novel. And we really enjoyed that. And that was a more difficult novel for students just because of the complexity of the language and it was very poetic. I loved it. Um, the students, it was, it was a hard draw for them, but I tried to balance that with the zombie book. So <laughs> I kind of the, dangled... people are asking what the title of the book was. The this... zombie book. Oh, um, Oh goodness. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> We're all looking for a good I'm, zombie book. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the name of it. I'll have to look it up and I'll put it in the comments. Um, but the, I dangled the zombie book 
you know, <laughs> in front of them to get through the Alice by Heart because I do like for them to learn too. And this one was a, the Alice by Heart was a World War II and Alice in Wonderland kind of mix. It was really, it was really cool. According to my nerdy librarian. <laughs> But the zombie book, I will um, locate that title and I'll put it in the comments. Good. This is really great. I mean, I know that you, you had to do it because of quarantine, but this is actually a really great idea when we do go back to normal, when kids don't have time, especially in high school, they don't have time because they're in so many clubs. They can yeah. still participate virtually in a book club, even if they're not physically there. You can still use this. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if you all have yeah, used bookclubcookbook.com. Like oh, I'll put that here. Mm -hmm. Have you guys, yes, bookclubcookbook.com? I have oh. not. What is that? Never heard of if it. If you go there, I mean, they have all kinds of recommendations for books, but they also have um, Galley Match uh, where they will send you books. You fill out a Google form according to your book club, your preferences and things. And every now and then they'll match you with the book and they'll send you the number of copies that you need for your book club free. So Whoa. Free is, <laughs> oh wow, that's great to know. That's yeah, really great. It is it is great. I've they've sent me, I guess, three titles for my book club and they've sent, you know, twelve or fifteen, whatever I need. Nice. That's a great, great that act. Great course was bookclubcookbook.com. Book club cookbook. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so much, you. Leah. This is great. Thanks. Thank you. All right, let's go back to the index. We're going to take a few more, and then I got to hop out to our next session. Okay. So let's take uh, maybe two more. There was one about, I'm trying to go back. My, oh, Microsoft Teams for library instruction. I believe that was Karen. Okay, Karen, let's see yours from Microsoft Teams. Well, there we go, Karen. Uh, mine is definitely a little bit wordier, but... Um, I know that a lot of people use Google and um, there weren't a lot of things out there for librarians who are using Teams and specifically to um, like ideas for what they can do because there are plenty of tutorials of how to actually use Teams. Um, but I wanted to give mine a bunch of ideas for actually implementing it for library instruction. Um, so I know that digital escape rooms are a big thing that a lot of people are doing, but um, I really liked using Teams for that, um, and so mine has just a lot of ideas for add-ons and things like that for um, librarians to uh, create lessons themselves. I think this is really great because you're right. There are a lot of Google uh, schools and you hit the nail right on the head. This book, while it's great for connecting with other teachers, it is really geared for librarians. So I appreciate the fact that you were thinking, um, how could we use Microsoft? Because, you know, you can go to lots of PD. We can learn about a lot of web tools, but how does it pertain to us? I mean, we're bright people. We could sit there, we could figure it out. But the fact that you already gave us ideas, really makes it so much easier for us. It's actually a fun tool. I, I don't know about, I don't know about everybody, but I think that Teams gets a lot of, it has a lot of haters out there, but um, I used it with my fourth and fifth grades. We were actually ready to roll when we went remote because we were already using it in the library. And so it's really a wonderful, flexible tool um, that, use that we can use whether we're fully remote or in a hybrid situation well your your pages look fantastic what did you think about the experience of working with others oh it was really it was really interesting to see um, and i learned a lot of different apps and um, things you can use because a lot of times the you know your schedule is just so busy and it's hard to kind of keep up with all the different things that you can use in here, we could flip through each other's pages and see what everybody else is doing, um, especially in different parts of the country. Um, and it was just, this has been a really wonderful experience and I really appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this. I really feel like librarians are either you're the only one in your school, you might be the only one in your district, you might be the only one in your county. Um, and so we, we do connect, we reach out to each other. But again, you know, late at night, you're thinking about what am I going to do tomorrow morning as an assignment, you could just open up this book and you've got ideas already. Absolutely.
So thank you so much, so much, Karen. I'm going to go thank back you. to the index and we'll grab one more, Deb. Got Heather who did connecting through social media. Okay, let me find my social media one, connecting through social media. And we'll click that and here we go. All right, right just Heather. Before we get started with Heather's, uh, the book was This Is Not a Test by Courtney Summers, was the zombie book. Thank you. This is not a <laughs> test. <laughs> All right, Heather, you there? I'm here. Hi, how's Hi. doing? Good. So, I thought originally I wanted to call this building my tribe but with all of the equity going on I didn't want anybody to be offended so connecting through social media again I really wanted to focus on us finding people and resources that we can use some people use a lot of social media some people it's new to them and all of a sudden in March they decided wait a minute I've got to talk to somebody else like you were saying we're islands in a lot of our situations so I picked what I call the big four um, Facebook, Twitter, um, Pinterest, and Instagram. Yeah, but, but then if you flip my pages, no, yeah, we'll um, the Snapchat, the YouTube, LinkedIn, Schoology, and um, yep. I can't remember the fifth one there, but they're all clickable links. So they take you out there. And then I gave some additional resources. So I, again, had to make videos and screenshots. That was a little bit challenging because I had picked the day after all the riots. And so wow. I was trying to find good social media and wait till my five kids were out of the house. Six, five? House, and the social media was appropriate that day. So to create the screenshots. But Book Creator was easy to work with. I was originally going to bring things in from Buncee. Um, yeah, I see that. This is Buncee. I see that right there. Um, I, I started with that and then... I found Book Creator was just had enough tools within it and enough opportunities that it was not hard to create everything. Um, and I used a mix of Loom and Screencastify. And I just, and I, at the end, I listed all of my links and some ideas of places maybe to start um, finding your own resources and kind of building your own community so that we go into this fall. If you're in person, you're hybrid, you're doing two at once you can find other people and other ideas. Um, so that was kind of my goal. And it was really fun to work with. I loved going in and seeing all the ideas. I think this is really important right now because again, this link is going to be shared with people who are not connected. And this gives them a quick, easy way to, you know, dip their toe into social media to connect with others. So, so yeah. I love your little videos. I love, and it's so simple. It's so simple to look at. Um, you know, we we are trying to be, you know, make things, you know, easier for, you know, good teaching for kids is good teaching for adults. And we don't, and honestly, we don't have the time to read full books on everything. And if we want, we can reach out to you for more information. And at least we, you know, we have a little taste of it. So this oh. is great. Thank you so much. It was it was a super fun project, and it was so nice to collaborate. Awesome. So I'm just, we're going to go for maybe a few more minutes because I'm going to hop out of this session and, and prep for the next one. We have uh, 35 different authors. We have 200 pages. That's where we're starting, but we're going to have a lot more. If you browse through, you'll notice that they are not in the same order here. This is your clickable index where you could just click around. But if you want to browse through, just like we browse through books, you can just go with the arrow here and you can just pick a page any day and um, see what's there. And you could just go through and you just could click away and just go through. It's a really awesome, I, I actually did a screencast, you might see it right now, where I just click through the pages. Um, we are very, very visual society. We learn by video, we learn by pictures. And so I, I want to thank everyone who participated in this awesome, awesome book. We are going to have other titles. And again, it's not too late. I saw someone say on, on social media, oh my gosh, it's too late. No, it's not. You'll, you'll have to find a topic that we haven't covered yet, but um, you can go right in and here, here is the book. Here's the book. So if anyone wants to take off their uh, mute button, if you want to want to just say hi, give a shout out. I'm just going through the pages. Are you going to post the link? 
Yep, I will post the link. Um, actually, I'm just going to go right here. I'm going to go back to the index. And my forward is at the front here. And here is the link right here. Librarian.rocks is my brand from Rebrandly. It's like a bit.ly, but I, I paid to get that at the beginning. So librarian.rocks slash digital librarian survival toolkit. So you can you could share that out right now. Again, please don't share the book creator link because uh, that may change. And I like having this one out. Um, and if you want to direct people to my website, this way they can get the link there as well. And then we can get some st uh, statistics. When you share this out, you might want to put like a little smiley face or something about it next to it. So it doesn't, it doesn't change this link into the book creator link. So again, I'm just going to go in here. I'll go to my website and I'll show you where to find it on my website. It's under free resources. It's going to be the Digital Librarian Survival Toolkit. You'll go there. Um, and then you just fill out the form and immediately it will pop up with the link. Oh. And mainly, and but by, by going through this okay. route, we'll be able to capture uh, where it, this is going. Uh, if we just use the link, I won't be able to know where it's going. But if we capture it this way, we'll see where it's going all around the world. Thank you. Uh,